You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with light minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crown. Write this down, please. The law of kingdom citizenship. Say that with me. The law of kingdom citizenship. Say it again. Citizenship is a result of law. So we're going to focus tonight on the power of your citizenship. And your citizenship is usually represented in a little document that we call a passport. But it's bigger than the passport. So the law of citizenship, now I'm going to move very fast because I want to cover a lot of things to make you go and think. And uh, I want to begin with a couple of statements. Uh, I want to define citizenship for you tonight. What is citizenship? And how does it work in the context of the constitution of a country? Remember that the kingdom of God is not a religion. It is what? It's a country. Heaven is a country. It's a place. It's invisible, but you can't see it. But it's more real than earth. And Jesus came to earth to restore back to earth what Adam lost. Now, Adam lost, first of all, the kingdom of God on earth know that from our studies already. God gave Adam dominion. The word dominion is the word radach in Hebrew, and it means kingdom, which means government authority. So earth was ruled by heaven, and Adam was given the kingdom of heaven on earth. The same way the British had the British government in the Bahamas, even though Britain is over 2,000 miles away. So That's exactly what God did. So when Adam lost that, Jesus came as the king to restore back to the earth what Adam lost, and Adam lost the kingdom of God. Secondly, Adam lost the government of heaven. That is the structure of rulership and authority. Thirdly, he lost the laws of heaven, which is very important. Governments exist to execute constitutional rights and laws of a country. That's why governments exist. God's kingdom is like any other country except it's the first country that ever existed. Because it created everything else. So it's the original country. It also has a constitution and laws. Also, Jesus came to earth to restore the values of heaven on earth. Where do values come from? They come from laws. This is why it's important when you talk about law in your country, you must automatically connect it to values. Now, what are values? We'll talk about this a bit later on in the year when we get into law and its impact on society, but Suffice it to say that values is what the people value. So we make laws based on what we value. So if we value, for example, gambling, then we'll make a law which says it's okay to gamble. And so the law creates the value system, and your value system then creates the moral fabric of the people. Morality is based on the values that a person has, and the values come from their belief system, which we call systems of law. The values produce a community. We call it a colony. So Jesus came to restore the colony of heaven on earth. The colony is the social interaction of the people living together. We call it a society. So he came to restore the society of heaven on earth. And the society expresses itself in culture. And so he came to restore the culture of heaven on earth. That whole list is important. 
If you want to know why you were sent to earth, it's to complete that list. You were sent to earth to bring God's kingdom, God's government, God's laws, God's values, God's morals, God's society, God's culture on earth. And we lost it. And most importantly, he came to bring back citizenship. Adam declared independence from heaven. He became an illegal immigrant from heaven. The Bible calls it the fall or turning away from God. Uh, the same thing that the Bahamas did to Great Britain. We turned our backs on Great Britain, so to speak. We declared independence in 1973. We cut off official government control ties with Great Britain, and therefore we are a colony by ourselves with our own government. They don't tell us what to do anymore. Leave us alone, Queen of England, King of England. Don't bother with us. That's what we told them. So what we have now is a, a, a symbolic relationship. We call it the Commonwealth, but they don't tell us what to do. That's what Adam did to heaven. Earth was a colony of heaven. Adam declared independence from heaven. So Adam became a foreigner. We are foreigners to Great Britain now. We used to be citizens, so to speak. They called us subjects because it was a kingdom. Over 200 years, we were called subjects. But today, when I go to England, I got to show my passport. They stop me every day I go there in London. And the guy makes me give me his passport. I used to be a citizen, okay? Before 1973. But today, they stop me, which means that you could be a citizen before and become a foreigner afterwards. We declared independence from God, so we became foreigners to the commonwealth of heaven. But the king was not satisfied with that. His name is Jesus Christ. So he came to earth to restore what we lost. Now, Matthew 4, 17, a couple of statements he made. When he came to earth, his first announcement is found in where? Matthew 4, verse 17. First announcement. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. He introduced, once again, back to earth, the country, the government, the laws of heaven. Most importantly, he reintroduced citizenship. We want to talk about that tonight. Citizenship is very, very powerful. And if you're going to live in the kingdom of God, understand the power you have with the laws of God, you have to understand the nature of citizenship. Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus told us what to pray for. He actually tells us that we are not from earth. The prayer is really a prayer of recolonization and Dependency again. Can I invent a word, please? And let me do that. Can you allow me? Redependence. Okay, break that down. That's a mouthful of a new word. All right. Jesus came to earth to bring back to earth redependence. We were never created by God to be the independent from heaven. That's why the, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It's still his property. And then he says, without me, you can do nothing. Matthew chapter 15. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now remember, vines, grape vines, I mean, that's just the great part of the vine. The great part is the branches. If you study scientifically, there's no life in the branch. The branch is only green because the life is coming out of that grape piece going into the branch. If you break a, a, a branch of a grape vine off and you put it in the ground, read my lips. It will never grow. Now you can take many trees and cut them, and you can, you know, put them in the ground. They'll grow. The grapevine is the only tree where you cannot break the branch off and start another plant. Why? There's no life in it. The words of Jesus: "I am the vine; you are the branches. Except you abide in me," he said. And my word, what's the word? Not what's the word? Laws. Abide in you. You can ask anything you want. It shall be done for you. But you got to remain where? In me. Independence is death for us. 
Independence is our own demise. That's why God knew that. God knows that earth that he created can exist without heaven. So that's why God came down to earth himself to reconnect the two. He says, look, uh, you don't understand. Uh, you can decide you cannot be dependent on me because you are not built for independence. God told Adam, the day you disobey my word, don't touch that tree, you will surely die. Why? Because there's no life in you by yourself. Is that clear? Okay. So, he said, when you pray, pray this. Our Father, who is where? In heaven. Holy is your name. Now pray what? Thy kingdom come back. Thy will be done again. Where? On earth. How? Just like it is in heaven. He said, you don't pray to come to heaven. That's not your problem. You pray for heaven to come back to earth. That's your problem. So, he's praying from this perspective that you are not from earth. You lost citizenship. You must pray for it to be reconnected. John 17 says, read, read from loud with me, read. John 17, 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, Jesus Christ is praying, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. He said, don't pray to leave. Pray to be different. Pray to be under a different government passport. That's why when you travel, you must have your passport. Your passport distinguishes you from the people you visited. This is why it's required to have one. Here's another statement if you want to write this down. The purpose of God was the restoration of kingdom to the earth. He wanted us to, to bring heaven back to earth, but he wanted us to stay in the earth, under heaven. This is where the law comes in. Uh, Pastor Richard and I, yesterday, were in Haiti. And last night, we slept we slept yesterday morning. We woke up in a home in Haiti. It was over, I guess, one point four million dollar home in Haiti. Now, it had five bedrooms. One bedroom is what, probably I don't know, fifty feet by thirty feet. That's my room, and that was in the master bedroom. It had a sofa. Had chairs, had a big flat screen TV, it had air conditioning, and when I opened the curtain, there was a pool with a jacuzzi. Now I'm in Haiti overlooking the tent. People sleeping on the ground. I could see the tent city from where I'm standing. But I'm in a mountain in a hut. My, my bedroom is big as five of those tents that you live in. He has his own bedroom next to me. Same setup, big bed, air conditioning, chairs in the room, you know, table, all this stuff, bathroom, we got our own bathroom, showers, everything, jacuzzi in the hotel, I mean, in the, in the house, and then right of right my door is the pool, and the pool has a waterfall floating over this We are in the poorest country in the world, but where am I staying? I'm staying in the ambassador's house. Where is he from? He ain't from Haiti. That is important. That's the law. The law is you are not as poor as the country you are in. You are as rich as the country you are from. That's why God doesn't call you members of parliament in the Bible. Hmm. Because members of parliament have their own houses. Their house is not a government's house. 
God doesn't call him in the Bible a senator. Senators have their own house, pay their own bills. But the Bible says you are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador doesn't own a house. Lord have mercy. He's under a different law. The law of citizenship for an ambassador is he is the property of the government. That means the government is totally responsible for his welfare. So there we were driving all through the muck and the mud of Haiti, the broken down homes everywhere, people on the street, wet and dirty, and we are driving in an SUV air conditioned tainted glass all day. Never sweat, never get wet. That evening, last evening, 40 hours ago, we were eating, ready for this, lobster in a five-star restaurant in Haiti yesterday. Explain that. Because he was under a different law. He is under a different country. In other words, your government doesn't treat you the way the country treats its people it is in. They treat you the way their culture is in their country. So you can tell where a person is from by the laws they are under. Father, do not take them out of the world. Keep them out of the world. But keep them from the evil in the world. The same principle he's talking about. This is difficult to explain. Let's take a look at power of citizenship. Write this down. The most powerful principle of kingdoms is citizenship. I wish I had two more days just to talk about it. Because it's so deep. Nothing is more powerful in a kingdom than citizenship. The same way is true about a country, of course. Nothing is more powerful in any country than citizenship. I'll explain in a minute. Number two, citizenship is a governmental covenant with the individual. When you become a citizen, the entire government becomes your servant. That's power. Thirdly, citizenship is access to rights. This is why it's difficult to get citizenship. Because once the government gives you citizenship, they've given you power to rights. This is why you gotta fight for citizenship. You gotta wait a long time to get it because they're giving you what? Power. Number four, citizenship is the commitment to a common set of laws and ideals and values. Citizenship means that you have decided to obey the laws established by a country. You're gonna live under them. You're gonna obey the ideals of that country, their basic core values citizenship and number four five rather citizenship is a privilege and not a one a right this is very important because you know sometimes people go around and say they demand that they become citizens that's the challenge of America right now we've got over what 13 million Latin Americans and Mexicans in America and they're trying to figure what to do with that some of them were brought in to work on special projects, then they go back home to Mexico. But they decide they like the lifestyle. So they don't want to go back. But now the government has over 13 million people in its country who are not registered, don't know who they are, and they are literally enjoying the privileges without the responsibility. They have no right to health care. They have no right to, to uh, free uh, medicine. They have no right to all the tax breaks. They have no right. Why? They are not citizens. How many things we demand from God and we ain't legal? Look at number four. Here you are disobeying the laws of God and then demanding God to pay your rent off. And God is saying, now you, you can feel here. You you claim to be my citizen, disobeying my law, but you still want the benefits. It's a country. 
Are you going to say taxes? Say it loud. Taxes come in the Bahamas. Okay. Don't get too excited. Now, taxation in the Bahamas, our first tax is what? NIB. They don't call it that, but that's what it is. That's why they're using our money, the bill thing. Okay? So, that's our first tax. Now, who pays NIB? Everybody who is working. That means it's a tax. Okay, in America, like any other country, France, Jamaica, everybody pays tax. In Jamaica, they call it VAT. Value added tax. Oh, it's a big one. You buy a car in Jamaica for $50,000, Jamaican dollars, you got to pay $150,000 to bring it in. They add value to it, double it. I got to discuss an idea too. You can buy a car fast. Okay? Now, taxation is important. I wish I could explain it. Tax is proof of citizenship. Write that down. This behavior don't understand that yet, but you will. How many times have you seen recently some people's names in the papers who didn't pay an ID? Come on, talk to me. And they don't care who they are, right? I mean, even MPs' names are getting front page. Why? Because you see, when it comes to taxes, it's a very dangerous thing because it is proof that you are a true citizen. You go to jail in America if you don't pay taxes. They don't take no mercy. Now, every country does it, except us. We kind of talk about it for a while. But we don't get there. Why is taxation full of citizenship? If you are a citizen, you are benefiting from what? The privileges of the country. But who, who will pay for them privileges? You. You want to drive on good roads, you need some money. You want some fixed electricity, you need some money. So they get the money from the citizens and they spend it on the infrastructure. Guess who drives on the road? The citizens. So here's somebody who been in the country for 40 years, using the roads, driving every day, and don't pay taxes. What do you call that? Come on, just behave in words. Keep it. Thank you. Good girl. Everybody says stealing. Why is that stealing? You are taking something you didn't pay for. Are you following me? All right. So now you'll understand something you understood before. Words of God. Malachi 3. You have robbed me. How have we robbed you? In tithes as taxes and offerings as investments. He said, You robbed me. They said, How? He said, You didn't pay your taxes. And because you haven't paid your taxes, he said, Watch this. He said, I will send the devourer to eat all your crops, destroy all of your farms, and you will have nothing. Now, wait a minute. God is a good God. He loves us. He was on the bed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. God said, yeah, but you take my guys. Watch him now. He comes down with law. It's a country. Jesus never placed emphasis on tax, on, on, on tithes, taxes, because to him, that's a given. You, you don't discuss NIV. You pay it. Hello? You you can't argue with, about NIV. It's a law. You don't argue with the law. You obey the law. That leads me to number six. Citizens require, citizenship requires what? Responsibility and accountability. The power of citizenship. It requires responsibility and accountability. My friends, if you are going to live in the kingdom of God, you just can't live happy-go-lucky and, you know, do what it feel like and run to the altar and God will bless me and then go and mess up again and God bless me and kind of use this grace thing. Uh, God said, look, there is an accountability. You will pay for what you do not do. You will suffer the consequence of irresponsibility. And this is the reason why we are focusing on this so much this year. The Lord spoke to me. He says, he says, if you're going to build a kingdom community, 
it has to be built on everyone agreeing to obey the same laws. The Lord will be common. None of us should be committing adultery. None of us should be in divorce. None of us should be shacking up. None of us should be fornicating. None of us should be lying. None of us should be stealing. None of us should be bearing false witness. None of us should be covetous. None of us should be doing stuff that we shouldn't be doing. In other words, let's all agree we're in the country of God. Is that fair? So we have an accountability to the government. Now we know the government is in our interest. You know, the king of heaven want to bless us. But the kingdom says you also got to be accountable to the devil. You have to stop with that red light. So, let's take a look then at what is citizenship. Now, I give some definitions. What is citizenship? First of all, it's the constitutional contract of the state with the individual. Number two, it is the legal status of the individual in relationship with the Constitution, and that guarantees all rights and privileges afforded in the Constitution. Deep words, what it simply means is citizenship is a contract that the government of the country and the citizen has together. And that contract has all the rights in it to protect the citizen. The laws are placed in there to protect the citizen's rights. So that leads me to number three. Citizenship is the constitutionally protected status of the individual with the state protected and guaranteed by law. In other words, a citizen is a powerful creature. The law of citizenship, ooh, if you get this, you will not be afraid to wake up in the morning. Because it means that once you are a citizen, the entire government is responsibility constitutionally to protect you. God said, I will give my angels charge concerning thee to keep you in all your ways. Notice, he said, I will give my angels what? Charge. Charge means they have to protect you. God says, how good and it is for men that we dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron upon the strength of his body. That means when you come together in unity under God's voice, that oil flows on your life. He says, There I will command the blessing. Do you know what it is when everybody curse you, but God bless you? You know, you straight hate. I mean, everyone don't like you, and God likes you. That's all you need. You don't need God to like you. <laughs> you. You need a bunch of people in life to like you to make it successful in life. Matter of fact, I figured something out years ago. You don't need everybody to approve of you to be successful. You need the right people to approve of you. And that's it. And God brings those people into your life because of royal favor. I got a feeling that this week you're going to meet somebody who's going to change your life forever. Just one meeting. Change your life. Citizenship is also the conference of, or the conference, rather, of a nation on the individual. Now, this is important. Write this one down. It's very important. Citizenship is the conferring of a nation on an individual. What do we mean? That's why you call it ambassador. An ambassador is not a person. An ambassador is a country. A citizen is the embodiment of a country. Now to think about this now. Which means that however the citizen acts, we say that's the way the country is. People can judge a country by the individuals they meet. Is that right? Happens all the time. Well, that's behavior. See that big duffel bag in the airport, Miami? That's a behavior. See what that? <laughs> in other words, there, there, there are certain behaviors that you exhibit, certain culture that you carry, because you embody. There are some people that you might not want to hire to work for you because of a reputation that they have as a country. 
which is sad. I wonder how many times people don't think we are from heaven. You can't be from heaven where I saw you last night. You know, in, in other words, are you represented? When you show up, did heaven arrive? This is the question. That's citizenship. Now, that's the part that you're responsible for. Here's the other part I like. That house we were sleeping in last year. Overlooking the pool. That's the other side of the body. In other words, but uh, every time you pass the beautiful yellow wall with the Bahamas embassy looking on the side of it, right across the street, now, all those tents, people living, sleeping on the floor, on the ground, on the dirt. Right there is this wall. Behind the wall, four cars is in the yard. Hmm? Food everywhere. Air conditioning. People sleeping outside on the mud. Right next to the house. So as soon as we walked past the gate, we entered the Bahamas, he said. The property of an embassy is not the country. It's the Bahamas. It's the country that's 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 there, represented. That property is the Bahamas. So, so when I walked in the yard, he said, welcome to the Bahamas. I was in Haiti. He said, welcome to the Bahamas. And you could tell it was the Bahamas. Everything was place. Here's my point. That place represents the country. When the ambassador picked up, he's just a nice suit. Get better. People walk in the road, bare feet all around us, dirty clothes. He was so sharp. Why? He was a country. Meeting us. Let me tell you why God was the possible. Not for you to walk around in your nice Camaro, your nice BMW, you say you rich. You missed that's why you're getting here. God wants to have a nice house, not for you to say, well, I've been the Jewesses, the Jews, and the the Jewesses. God wants to bless you, prosper you, because he needs good representation. Say amen, hallelujah. Matter of fact, go ahead and confess right now. Say, Lord, forgive me. Now, bless me for your sake. Give him a big praise right there. That's, that's why God blesses me. You know, uh, the other day we pulled up in our aircraft uh, and parked, and I'll never forget this experience. I stepped out of my aircraft, right? And the guy next to me walked into his aircraft. He was uh, Mr. Lombard, his name, remember? You want to know the fella? The radio host, what's his name? Huh? Russ Lombard. Yeah. So he stepped out of his, I stepped out of mine. But he stopped and looked. But first of all, he couldn't believe a brother with brown skin was walking out of the thing. It's like, you know, hey, this don't look right. But you're going to see his face. It was like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, what are you doing here? Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> so he walks up to me and says, uh, ah, how you doing? That's a beautiful aircraft. What's your name? He wanted to meet Just because of what you bring to the scene. It's not a matter of showing off what you get. If it, when you get the mentality that I am from another place, I just happen to reside on the planet at the time, but I work for a country and I am a citizen of another world, when you get that revelation, I guarantee you, God will start bringing things to Explain. That's the law of citizenship. Okay, I gotta say one thing again. Listen carefully. Jesus said, According to your faith, be it unto you. Say it. Okay. What did you just say? According 
That means it depends on what you believe, whether you experience it. So here I am, teaching hard to get this to you. What are you going to do with it now? You can. This is what it is. Therefore, if any man hears my words, okay, that's fine. But then he says, and puts it into practice. That means you have to go out of this building and say, look, that is no longer a nice teaching that Pastor Miles gave tonight. That is what I'm going to live from now on. I got to believe this for myself. Oh, I wish I could get this to you. I'm not teaching for you to feel good. I'm teaching for you to have a transformed thinking. So that when you begin to apply this, the same thing God did for me, He's going to do for you. I ain't special. God says it's according to your faith. According to your faith. It's hard. Believing is hard work. Because you're fighting all the things you accepted before. You gotta fight all the old ideas. You know, I was born in the Brethren Church group in the Baptist Church, I'm gonna die in the Pentecostal. And then I met the kingdom of God. And boy, it's a fight to get rid of that stuff. That stuff is hard. It's there. It's you gotta fight it. According to your faith, son. This thing will work according to your faith. Let me ask you. Jesus asked this question. Do you believe what you just heard? Now, citizenship is the receiving of a country. When Pastor Richard and I walked into that house, I felt a little bit, you know, nice. And then I felt the religious spirit come back, almost got in my head, you know. Religious spirit. How could you be in this beautiful home and then poor people down there suffering? You see, that's called religious guilt. The ambassador ain't skip a beat. He went from mud to tiles. Why? This is what he used to. <laughs> Say, neighbor, I deserve it. Say it loud. Come on, say it loud. No, shout it loud. I deserve it. Until you believe that, you ain't gonna get it. I I had to watch my mind last night. I was with an ambassador, man. I was in the Bahamas. Hey. There are a lot of Haitians who don't want to come to the Bahamas. You know why? Bahamas poor. Depends on what part you go. Do you believe you deserve the best? I ain't sure you. Because when you get that new car, you start feeling guilty that your your brothers didn't get it. You pop, you pull up to the, the Christmas party in your nice car, and everybody starts thinking, you know, you know, brother, sister, you know. And then they feel guilty. This happens to the humans, you know. You 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 make plenty of money and you almost feel guilty. That other people ain't making it. But you gotta tell them that I know a secret you know, but I know some secrets. He's giving me the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. I'm unlocking some things. So instead of getting jealous of people, find out your secrets. Tell me what you're doing. I want to know how you're doing with it. The fastest route to poverty is jealousy. You can never learn from someone you are jealous of. They 
I'm going to be a teacher. So when I get around people who I won't be like, I start asking questions. How you did this? How you did that? How long it took to do that? Why you did it like that? Why you did it that way? I can't. I won't know the secret. That's what that is about. It's about the laws, the secrets of the functioning of heaven. Write this down, please. Luke 22. It says, I confer on you, Jesus says, what? A kingdom. Here's the word. Just like my father conferred on me. That is a diplomatic statement. When an ambassador comes to the Bahamas and they go to the government's house, they are on a yeah. When they go to present their papers, do you know what they're doing? The Bahamian guy who was appointed ambassador in uh, any country, the governor uh, would take a book, put it in his hand, and the governor would touch his shoulder. And say, now you are now an official ambassador. When that moment is finished, that person becomes a country. That's why every time you see them, you have to bow and say, Your Excellency. Because it's not a person, you are respecting a country. Look at that statement. Jesus said, I confer. Now, when the governor takes his hand and puts on the shoulders like this, it's called conferring. To confer means to transfer something to another person. The prime minister cannot do that. The prime minister doesn't represent the Bahamas, he represents a party. The governor represents the country. He's the head of state. It takes him to give them the ambassador the authority, not the prime minister. You get that right now? Yeah, the prime minister can't make ambassador. He can recommend them. But the governor is the one who makes them ambassador because he represents the Bahamas. He puts the whole country on that person. That's why you cannot fire an ambassador. You can recall them, but you can't fire them. Because they are a country. Do you believe that? Guess what? I believe that. I will confer on you the kingdom. Just like the Father conferred one on me. In other words, when I came to earth, the Father sent me with a whole country. Now I'm transferring the country to you. You have the citizenship and the ambassadorship of an entire country called heaven. Which means you're supposed to act like, dress like, talk like, look like, smell like, eat like, you know, brush teeth like ever. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. Can I put it this way? Your earthly days are over. Why don't I? Say to yourself, man. Say it again. One more time. Close your eyes, say to yourself loud, talk to yourself. My earthly days are over. Say it again. My earthly days are over. That means the way they live on earth, I don't live like that no more. From the night forward, I'm picking up another culture from heaven. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. I call it the citizen covenant. Let's read together verse 12. Read. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from what? The citizenship in Israel, and you were foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Jesus Christ, you who were once far away have been what? Brought back near through the blood. Give God a hand. Praise God. Write that scripture now, man. Notice, he said, you were what? Foreigners. I tell you the foreigners. Because I, I don't know you. No one left you. You were foreigners. But I came looking for you. I shed my blood for you. Not to bring you to heaven, but to bring heaven to you. That's why I came. To bring you near back to the kingdom lifestyle. Another verse I thought was interesting. Uh, 
one that is found in the book of Romans is very powerful. And it talks about the uniqueness of kingdom citizenship. Let's write this down real quick. Kingdom citizenship is unique and different from normal citizenship. And this is what you need to learn about the law, the secret laws of kingdom, kingdom citizenship. These are the things that I'm living by and learning to live by every day. Number one, in a kingdom, all citizens are related to the king. Now, that's what separates our kingdom from any other kingdom. When we were under the British kingdom, we were not related to the queen or the king. Matter of fact, they had us as slaves. We were subordinates, subordinary people. We were subjects, below jacks. Not just rejects, we were below rejects. We, we were subjects, you understand me? We, <laughs> they saw us as property. We were like chattel. We, we had to keep their farms and, and plant their plantations. And we had to, to, to pick their cotton and, and, and bale their hay. We, we were just there to clean their house and, and feed their children. We, we had to sleep out in the, the wooden shack in the back and but clean the big mansion. That, that's what they saw on us. That this, that we weren't next to no king. But in the kingdom of God, glory, hallelujah. The Bible says, he is glad to call you his brethren. What a king. Secondly, all citizens of the kingdom of heaven have access to the government. No other kingdom has the kind of privilege. Thirdly, all citizens of the kingdom of God are appointed ambassadors. Everybody is an ambassador. Now, in most countries, they only choose a few people. But in the kingdom of God, because you are all ambassadors, which means all of you are living on the hill in Haiti with a pool. Everybody. This is why I tell you, you got to get it. God ain't got no special saints. You know, God don't love one partial against the other. That's why the gospel is called good news. The gospel is good news. The good news of the kingdom of God. Everybody qualifies for kingdom living, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom status. Because we are all appointed at the same level. We are all ambassadors. And number five, all kingdom citizens have commonwealth. And they are leaders in the kingdom of God. Everybody's a leader. Ambassadors automatically a leader. So you are the responsible representation of a nation. This is why when you do something dumb, I am concerned. Because you represent me. You see? If you and I are the same nation, and you are doing something that is unholy, that affects all of us. Because all of us are part of the same country. So you do right to protect everybody else. There's no such thing as a private you know, personal obedience. It's corporate obedience. We must all do right to everybody to get blessed. You know, this 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 whole teaching is one that takes a while to work it up in your you know in your head. Because it's overwhelming, isn't it? Can you imagine going to go tell everybody, I'm an ambassador, you know. They will laugh you to sleep. So what you got to do is have a private meeting by yourself in the bathroom and talk to yourself and ask yourself too. They, that's all right. Boy, you look good. Eh? Yeah, man, I look good. Boy, rich. Eh? Yeah, boy, I rich. Talk to yourself. Why? You know what else to talk to in the house? <laughs> I do it all the time, man. What? My best conversations are with me. Why? Because I know you no disagreement in my conversation. <laughs> I'm good looking. Oh, yes, you are, brother. I am good looking. Mm -hmm. Say it again to me. I'm good looking. Say it again. I'm good looking. Thank you very much. <laughs> Talk to yourself. Number six. What's number six? All citizens in the kingdom of God are what? Family. Why? We got the same father, the same big brother. Yeshua. We have the same brother. Royal So we are family. That's the only kingdom in history where all the citizens are family to the king. So it's not just a royal family 
with an, in a nation, it's a whole nation with a royal family. That's why God, I, God says to Moses, I will make you a royal priesthood and a holy nation. The whole nation will be royal and will be holy. All right. Now, look at Acts chapter 22. This is what we read. I want to close with this. I'll pick up here next time. But this is important. We tell a story about power of citizenship. This was read tonight. I want to read it again. Because I want you to leave this place with a strong mind this week. Acts 22 is a story about Paul the Apostle. Paul was a Jew. But Paul was born in the Roman Empire. Paul was born at a time when there was a racist, segregationist attitude between the two groups. Uh, the Jews were very, very racist and discriminatory, uh, both religiously speaking and otherwise, ethnically. And the Romans saw them, of course, in a strange way. They saw them as dogs. And, and there was all kinds of stuff going on. And Paul's father was a Jew, but Paul's father must have been very wealthy. Because the Bible talks about Paul as attending the most sophisticated school in the entire day. It's called the School of Gamaliel. That was the school Paul studied at. It was the most difficult school to get in, and it cost a lot of money. And Paul not only attended the school, he graduated as a top student. The Bible talks about that. Paul actually said many times that I was the chief graduate of all the pharmaceutical school. Paul's father also had good influence in the city. The city was called Tarsus. You see it all through the Bible, in the New Testament. Tarsus was a big merchant city. It was like New York. A lot of massive stuff going on there. That's where Paul grew up. Paul grew up in the big city. Paul was a city guy. His father was rich. was a merchant, obviously. And Paul, his father was so wealthy <laughs> that he could buy citizenship. Now, I ain't going to go no with that, but that has happened here, too. But everybody know it ain't you. It's in the Bible. Okay? Paul's father bought citizenship. Now, you can interpret what that means. It could mean that Paul's father had such a big business that the Roman government, local government, said, you know something? They might as well give the brother a piece of this because we can benefit from that. So Paul's father was a legal Roman citizen but also a Jew. Paul was born in that house. When your father is a Roman citizen, your children are automatically citizens of Rome. So Paul was born with dual citizenship. He had citizenship in the nation of Israel and Roman citizenship. I want you to read the power of citizenship now. Okay. So... The Romans are the ones who run things. You know what run things means? Some of you are a little older, I can explain that. That means they're in charge of everything. Okay. So they know they can't punish him, but you know, they live in inside another country, you know, as subjects. So they arrest Paul as a religious guys. Religious guys, religious, religious, 
start the reform took him to the political class. Watch him now. And they say, he is causing insurrection. He's guilty of treason. They take argument they make before the governor. The governor listened to everything. And the governor said, okay. And the governor had Paul come before the courts. And that's where this whole situation takes place. And they lied on Paul. They said, Paul claimed that this Jesus Christ he served is king. And if Caesar's king, then he is committing treason. And he is agitating the people to come against Rome. And they were arguing this case. And the governor says, okay, I'll tell you what, then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve the problem. I don't want no riot in my town. We're all getting ready for riot. So, what I can do is I'm going to whip Paul to satisfy you. I'm going to punish him and put him in jail, you know, beat him and everything. And that you all will be happy. Yeah, yeah, they'll be happy. They'll be fine. So, this is where the story picks up. Verse 25. That's the story, huh? It's a joke, you know, watch this. As they stretched him out, a poor, cool, cool, see, I like Paul. I, I just like Pablo. I want you to leave here and be like Paul. Let the devil think right at the last minute he went. Just walk right in, lay out, wait to the last minute and pull out your passport. You say, brother, <laughs> y'all don't get a Jew plan. Paul waited until they stripped off his clothes, stretched him out on that wooden grill, ropes tied to his leg, his hands. He's facing down, and they're going to whip his back until every skin is off. But the whip was a leather whip with pieces of glass and steel in it. That's how the Romans whipped him. That's why they used to Jesus as well. Paul was about to get whipped. Forty lashes. Now, what's Paul? As they stretched him out to flog him, that's the same. Paul. Now, uh, here's the guy with the helmet on, you know, big muscles. He's the soldier, he got the whip, he got the authority. He gonna whip Paul to death. Another one on the other side, and that's how they whip. One whip, next one whip. One whip, so they just kind of time it. Everybody ready to go? And Paul says, Now, nah, I got something to say before you start. The centurion standing there, that means the guy in charge. Standing there watching the witness. Paul says, Is it legal? I go on right now. I think you have to do it right now, okay? But at this, sometime you gotta say some things. Paul doesn't say, Why are you doing this? I've been faithful to the Lord all these years. I've been traveling as a missionary, and you know, the Lord will deliver me. No, 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 no. I go in that direction. I got some power. Glory, hallelujah. Paul says, is it legal for you to flog what? A Roman citizen. He went to citizenship. Now, let me explain why that's important. In the Roman constitution, the law of the land, it is illegal to crucify or with a Roman citizen. It's against the law. They only crucify foreigners and those who were rebels. They only whipped people who were, who were non-citizens. They were sure Paul was a Jew. But Paul didn't tell them. He had fewer. And it was a me too child. See, I want you to leave here tonight with fewer. Yes, Bahamian, I know that Bahamian, yeah, I know that. And that, you know, Christ is not eating us, fine, fine. But I got another thing in my pocket from another place. Paul says, is it legal to what? The flaw of a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found with him. I watched the reaction. When the centurion heard this, that was the devil. 
when the centurion heard this, he ran to the commander and reported it. He says, oh, what are we going to do? In other words, Paul's power put them in trouble. When you make demands of God's constitution, not as a religious person, but as a citizen, Every devil and the angels back on the side. Oh, that one will know their rights. It's the power of citizenship. Look at the rest of the rest of the story. It says, what are we going to do? This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked him, tell me, are you a citizen of truth? Actually, maybe I'm not asking, but I'm sure he's asking. Yes. Paul's answer? Say it say, say for yourself. Yes, I am. You've got to say it with firmness now. Are you a kingdom citizen? Yes, I am. Are you from heaven? Yes, I am. That's your answer for now. When they ask you, who you are. Don't tell them you are a Christian. I am a citizen of heaven. You are what? Yes, I am. What's the response? Then the commander said, I have to pay for mine. <laughs> this fellow also got his. But Paul didn't have to pay for his. Paul said, What? I was born. Come on, say it again. I was born. One more time. Boy, time to show now. Let's go home showing on this one. Everybody's I was born again. Paul said, Listen, boy, you only I had to go do rituals to get this. Association with people, you know, you got to be what? Because if fellas sell you something, you take it back. But if you're born, if you're born into the kingdom of heaven, you will never take it back. Isn't that beautiful? Give God a hand for his word tonight. This, this is what it's all about, huh? Thank you for listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, where we are cultivating a kingdom community. Please sign up for our podcast, download, like, and share. Look for us on your social media platforms. If you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com.